When using the audio pass-through with Windows, it's important to create an aggregate device. For aggregation of inputs and outputs, iConnectivity recommends Ozio for All. To download and install the free Ozio for All driver, go to www.ozioforall.com. Once Ozio for All is installed, we open our DAW. For this example, we will be using Ableton Live. Notice that the Ozio drivers are starting up. I have two tracks open. The first is our audio track, which will be receiving and outputting the digital audio from our iOS device. The second is our MIDI track, which is for MIDI data. First we need to enable Ozio for All as the input device. Each DAW will have a different looking menu of where to do this, but the process should be very similar. In Live, we select Options, then Preferences. We make sure that Ozio is chosen for driver type. And for audio device, we select Ozio for All. Selecting the hardware setup, we'll open the Ozio for All settings window. The devices that appear in your list will reflect the audio devices connected to your computer, and as such will probably be different, but don't be alarmed. As you see here, we have a USB audio interface as well as the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. The order of these devices in this list correspond to the order of selection of inputs and outputs that will appear in your DAW. The wrench will allow us to go to the advanced menu so we can configure the Ozio for All. Clicking on the plus sign expands a submenu for the device. To activate a device, click the button in front of the device name. The blue button and arrow will light to indicate the device is active. If there's no icon, then the device is inactive but is available for use. The button with an X means the device is in use elsewhere by another audio application. I will activate the audio interface for external speaker playback and monitoring. Now we activate the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus's inputs and outputs. You can adjust the buffer length for each selected device. Smaller buffer size means lower latency. Upon hearing crackles, or if audio becomes distorted, you need to increase the buffer size. Unless you are an advanced user and know what you are doing, I would leave these added options on their default settings. When you are done, close the Ozio for All window. Some DAWs pre-configure the audio inputs and outputs automatically, while many do not. Please refer to your DAW's instructions if you are unclear how this is done. Here as you will see in Live, we go to our Audio tab. Under the Input Configure, I will enable all inputs. In my case, the 1-2 is my input for external audio interface and 3-4 for the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. In the Output Configure, the 1-2 is the external audio interface and 3-4 for the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. Before we proceed, we must ensure that our iOS app has recognized the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and that it is receiving and sending MIDI to our device. This is usually accessed in an audio MIDI setup configuration menu. They may differ in appearance from app to app, but the functionality and terms are usually the same. Back to our DAW, we want the digital audio produced from our iOS device passed through the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus, then routed into our audio track. Here we select our audio source which will be produced from our iOS device connected to our iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. As we mentioned before, the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus was listed as input 3.4. By selecting the 1.2, the audio is now going into my audio interface and out my external speakers. Now we can hear and record the digital audio being produced going from our iPad to the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and into our DAW. Now we turn our attention to our MIDI track. I've connected a MIDI keyboard controller to the MIDI DIN port 1 of the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. Be aware that by default, for MIDI communication between the iOS and the computer, the USB ports are routed port 1.3 to port 2.3. I have selected all ins in Live, this may again vary from DAW to DAW, and selected MIDI Out 3 as the MIDI output for this track. This will allow my iOS device to receive the MIDI commands from all MIDI input or played back from this track. Now my controller is creating MIDI data, sending to the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus into my DAW as well as my iOS device.